Today, we are going to take a deep dive on how you can flick your crokinole disc. What I am not going to do is tell you exactly how you should be flicking, because I think you'll find that it's different for everyone. What works for one player may not work for another. And I think you'll also find that some things can be taught while other things need to be learned. What we are going to cover first is the most common mistakes you'll see most beginner players make, and the one hard and fast guideline that is going to help anyone get off to a good start with your flicking career. And stick around to the end where we are going to look at two very unique and special ways that you can flick. Even if you don't choose to use these, they're a great fun challenge for you to play with. Let's dig in. Jeremy Tracy here with Tracy Boards. If you find this video helpful, please give us a like, a comment, a share, and use one of these new flicking styles to go ahead and flick that subscribe button so you'll always know when there's new content for you to enjoy. Although this idea has been rattling around up here for a while, it was a recent email from John asking us to cover flicking styles that finally inspired us to get this done. So if you have questions or comments or things that you'd like us to cover, please go ahead and throw that in a comment below. We'll get to it as soon as we can. So keep your questions and comments coming for more video ideas. And for this video, if there is a flicking style that we don't cover, please put that down below. We have traveled around a lot and seen many flicking styles, but I'm sure that we've yet to have seen them all. And remember to stick around to the end to see your two bonus flicking challenges. Let's get started by taking a closer look at the two most common mistakes you will see beginner players make. The first one is what I would call the floating hand. They will place their disc, but then their hand floats up in the air. Sometimes you'll see it float back and forth from side to side as they get ready to shoot, or you see it float forward and back. But the challenge with this is, is there's so many parts of the arm, the shoulder, the bicep, everything is involved with their shot. And with that many muscles involved, it is very difficult to be consistent and learn to grow and make better shots. Now, another thing that you will see a lot of beginner players do is they want to place their finger on top of the disc and then slide it forward like that. And people will ask me, they'll say, Jeremy, is that illegal? Now, I don't know that it's illegal unless, and this is very highly likely, that their finger is still in contact with the disc long after it leaves the shooting line. And in my mind, that makes it illegal. The bigger challenge that I have with it is that the ceiling of how good you can get by shooting this way is very, very low. You're not going to progress and become better and more consistent because again, there's so many muscles involved. So for both of these challenges that I see so many beginners have, the one guideline that is hard and fast that will help you move beyond that is to anchor your hand. Have your hand completely still. One way or another, the hand stays still and just the finger moves. From there, you're going to find it a lot easier to have less variables and more consistency. And from there, you can make those little adjustments in what you do with your finger for more consistency, more accuracy, more wins, and more fun. The next question we hear a lot is which finger should you shoot with? There is definitely no rule with this and I would also say this is definitely something that comes down to personal preference. The vast majority of the high level players that you see in the NCAA at the World Championships are definitely index finger shooters. Now there are a few of us that are what we would call second finger or middle finger shooters. There are pros and cons to both. Some people will argue that the middle finger, the second finger makes for a stronger shot which definitely can be advantageous. I don't really know whether that factors in or not but a lot of people will favor the index finger for a couple of reasons. One it comes more naturally to them they have more control but for me the experience that I've had the downside of using your middle finger is that sometimes when you line up if you're shooting with your second finger the first finger your index finger blocks your view and an experience I know I've had is sometimes if it's a really fast board which I like and a very well waxed disc sometimes you're getting ready to move getting ready to shoot that disc will move on you just slightly and if you don't see it it messes up your shot honestly if I had it all to do over again I would love to learn to shoot with my index finger I have tried to transition over to being an index finger shooter but invariably 
that button, for whatever reason, my index finger likes to shoot to the right instead of straight ahead. I'd encourage you to try both fingers and see which one works best for you. The rest of the way through, I am going to continue to shoot with my second finger, my middle finger, because that's what comes naturally to me. But as we look at these, just know it's your choice. And you can experiment with each one of, within each one of these, you can experiment with each of your fingers and decide what works best for you. What I encourage people to start with at least is to use their thumb as part of the shot. And what I mean by that is you put whichever finger you're gonna shoot with, pressure against your thumb, and then you release that in order to flick. So you're lined up here, you release, and that's how you shoot your disc, flick your disc across the board. Now, that's one way to go, and another way that you'll see a lot of players and a lot of top level players go, is they do what's called a free finger shot. Their thumb has nothing to do with it, they anchor their hand, like we've already talked about, and that finger, just free motion, no thumb involved, and you give that a push. I even know players that will go free finger for open 20s and for lighter shots and then use their thumb when they need to make a power shot like a double takeout or a follow through 20. I don't necessarily like that. I would encourage you to find one style of shooting. That's why I like to use my thumb is because I do it the same way every time. I just adjust the strength based on which shot I'm making. Again, that's what works for me. Experiment and decide what works for you. Now, within the free finger shooting and the thumb shooting, there is yet another variable for you to consider. Another question that we get a lot is what angle should I have my hand at? One option is to have your hand more straight up and down. Roy Campbell does this. I see his finger is very straight up and down. Andrew Hutchinson, both of these guys, fantastic high level players. They like to have their finger straight up and down. Some people like to have their hand very sideways. My personal preference is something in the middle. I just put my hand, how my hand rests naturally on the board is how I shoot. So again, experiment with that and find what works for you, but I'd encourage you with all of these to pick one style, one approach, and run with that for a few shots. Don't just try one shot, it doesn't work. You know, toss it and move on. Try one style for a game or a couple of rounds to see what works and then try another style. Yet another variation, as if there weren't enough already, that you can experiment with is one that I've seen many players have fantastic success with. First one that comes to mind, if I'm not mistaken, this is how Connor Ryman shoots. Another fantastic player. He's won NCAA tournaments. He made it to the top four of the World Crokinole Championships in Tavistock of 2019. Great player. And what I've seen him do is he uses, instead of using his thumb as that pressure point, he actually uses the edge of the board, where he pushes his finger up against the edge of the board, and then it's as he lifts from there, that is what causes the flicking action. I don't have great success with that, but it's something that you can experiment with to see how it works for you. Yet another example, and I believe that I played against a player at the World Crokinole Championships a few years ago. If my memory serves, he was a young fellow from New York. And the way he anchored his hand was I would see him grab a really firm grasp on the rail. So he'd hold tight like this, and then from there he would shoot free finger, but it was a strong hold on the rail, and he would shoot from there. Now this can work, but in my experience and watching him play, what, what I found he struggled more with was if it came over here and even more so to this side to try to be holding that rail, it just, he ended up having to adjust his style if he was shooting and I'd encourage you to find something that works easily regardless of what angle you're coming in at. Again, for that consistency so you can have more control and better results. I don't think my friend Simon would forgive me if I didn't cover his way of shooting, which we call the spider. Now what I'll see him do is he takes his index finger and his ring finger and he sets them down on the board. Again, he's doing really well because he's got it anchored. And then from there, that's what gives him the control. And from there, he shoots free finger. But can you see why we call it the spider? 
And again, he has fantastic results with his open 20s. So it may be something that you try experimenting with. Again, the index and pinky finger are the base that gives you that solid anchor and then free finger with that middle finger to see what kind of success you can have with that. Here's a couple of auxiliary pointers if in case you choose to go with either using your thumb, which is my favorite way of shooting, or using the edge of the board, either one. What I'd encourage you to do is make sure that Let's, let's talk about the thumb with the finger. I'd encourage you to make sure that you're keeping your finger nice and close because with this, you can get a lot of power. So if you're up close, then it becomes more of a push. Whereas where I see people get into trouble is if their hand is way back, then their finger has a lot of velocity going forward and it becomes more of a strike and they end up hurting their fingernail. We did an entire video on how to shoot without hurting your fingernail, so maybe check that out. But the idea is stay nice and close and make sure that it's more of a push. That doesn't really apply with the free finger, you need to have some movement, but if you're using power with the thumb, nice and close, and keep that fingernail feeling good for hours of coconut fun. We have already covered a lot of variables for you to experiment with, but there's two more bonus techniques that I'd like to share with you in case you haven't seen these already. These can just be fun to mess around with and see how they work for you, or maybe you'll pull them out in unique situations and they'll help you in a tight spot. Spot. The first one is what we would call a carom shooting technique. If you've never seen it, caroms is a really cool game that is similar to crokinole in a way. It's like a cross between crokinole and pool, but the point is that they have a very unique shooting style. I've seen Nathan Walsh just mess around with this just when we're you know uh, playing in between games, and I've also there's a, a player that I know named Jackie who has a lot of experience in caroms and is now transitioning over to crokinole, and she shoots a carom style. Now, I haven't done a lot of this, so bear with me, but the basic idea is that you take your fingers and you cross them over, that's where the power comes from, and then it's a release of that is how you go ahead and flick your disc. So you can do this from either side. I, I struggle with this one a little bit more, but the same idea, you cross those fingers, and then it's that release strike that hits it. So not necessarily recommending this as a great technique, but just something to play with and see, uh, see what kind of fun you can have practicing your carom shot. The other bonus tip. Now, I think the only time I had seen this on this side of the ocean was occasionally our friend Howard Martin at the St. Jacobs Club. If it was a shot on the left side, so as a right-handed player, shots from the left can be tough, that he didn't really feel like he could get himself around there behind, he would instead use his thumb of his left hand to shoot that disc in toward the middle. Now I thought it was just something that people do from time to time until I had the opportunity to travel to Budapest and play in the World Cup against people from many countries. And I met a gentleman, and if I'm not mistaken, his name was Attila. He played every single shot shooting with his thumb. Even open 20 straight up the middle, he used his thumb. I was absolutely amazed at the success level and the accuracy he had shooting with his thumb. Now, I never adopt this as my normal way of shooting, but it is something that's fun to experiment with and maybe something for your offside, your non-dominant side that you want to go ahead and give it a go. Call yourself a till of the thumb and see what kind of crokinole shots you can pull off. Let us know down below, which flicking style did we not cover? Which ones do you find to be most effective or most beginner friendly? Let us know. Also let us know what other topics would you like us to cover in future videos. Most importantly, find a flicking style that works for you and have fun playing the greatest game on earth. Are you ready for a blooperless recording session? Unless you ask us to cover the process and then I'm just gonna tell you